I hear all these horns blowing, and I look out, and there's all these driverless cars lined up all the way down. From an innovation in medicine to one in tech, flying cars are closer to becoming reality. A Bay Area company has been testing a prototype and just got federal approval to take to the skies. Crown Force Ellis Gamonian here in the studio now to show us a first look at the ALIF Model A vehicle. Ken, the innovation out of Silicon Valley is once again pushing the limits of the realm of possibility. This is the vision of the company ALIF that they have for the near future. And as you can see in the video that they released, it shows traffic moving well above the Bay Bridge and up in the air. I grew up reading uh, Asimov, Bradbury, uh, and some other science fiction writers. And uh, watching, mostly watching um, Back to the Future, Blade Runner, Fifth Element. Innovator Jim Duhovny was inspired by science fiction to make flying cars a reality. Together with these three men, they gathered in a Palo Alto cafe and sketched a rough drawing of what it could look like. Seven years later, the Federal Aviation Administration has given them the green light to take their Model A prototype to the skies. This is a limited special airworks and its approval which allows us to fly in very limited spaces for very limited purposes. But that being said, it's very important for us because it gives us freedom to do a lot of flight testing, to show it to people, right, to do the public demonstration. This is something we expect to do um, pretty soon. Duchovny believes this is the next efficient mode of travel, like the evolution from a horse and carriage to the traditional car. The Aleph Model A is 100% electric, fits in a garage, can drive on the road, and take off and land vertically like a helicopter, but with significantly less wind force and noise, according to the company. The vehicle is listed at $300,000, but the hope is to one day make it affordable by slashing the cost down to around $30,000 in the future. Duchovny predicts the flying car will be made widely available to the masses, ideally by the year 2030. ALIF is already offering pre-orders for their flying car, $150 to get in line and $1,500 for the priority wait list. The FAA will have to continue to create regulations for airborne vehicles until then. And Ken, we'll just have to see what kind of vehicle licensing uh, drivers would have to get approved for here in order to take something like this and operate one of them. Side shows in the sky to come, I guess. That's exactly what I was thinking when I saw this. <laughs> we'll see how it all works out. Uh, sky love to get donuts. out of the traffic. Like yeah. to get out of the traffic. Thank you, Ella. Well, we now have video of a, the moment that a Tesla in self-driving mode started breaking unexpectedly on the Bay Bridge, causing eight cars to pile up. Yeah, it was a mess. Crown Force Amanda Harry has a look at the video and reaction to it from a technology specialist. New video of a dramatic crash on the Bay Bridge. A Tesla, believed to be on autopilot, started breaking, causing an eight-car pileup on Thanksgiving. You can see in the video from California Highway Patrol that traffic was moving well just after 12.30 in the afternoon. Then, a white Tesla put on its left blinker, moves into the left lane, and stops, causing the car behind it to crash into it, followed by six more cars. One vehicle even gets pushed up against the wall of the bridge. According to CHP, the driver of the Tesla was in full self-driving mode. One industry expert says he wasn't surprised by what happened. Figured that most likely it was something related to phantom braking, which is a very common problem with Teslas. Uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has been investigating uh, phantom braking ex incidents on Teslas for quite some time. Um, and as, as it turns out, when we saw the video the other day, that looks like exactly what happened. Sam Abu Al Samad is a principal e-mobility analyst with Guidehouse Insights. He explains why a Tesla may phantom brake. The way they use the camera sensors on the Tesla vehicles, uh, they don't have radar or any other type of active sensor that can accurately detect measurement. And sometimes the, the cameras will misperceive Perceive what they see, and they'll they'll think that they'll, it'll the camera system will think it's seeing something that's not there, and react to that and slam on the brakes. Nine people were treated for minor injuries, including one child who was hospitalized. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is investigating the crash. As of now, CHP says it can't confirm if the full self-driving system was active at the time of the incident, but it does say in the report that the driver should still have their hands on the wheel and have manual control of their car. A message echoed by Abu Al-Samad. You have a Tesla, don't use self-driving.
uh, because it's not self-driving. It is not actually capable of safely driving itself. Uh, it is at best uh, a sophisticated driver assistance system. Amanda Harry, Cron 4 News. Well, you may know getting around the Bay Area was pretty tough for a lot of drivers yesterday, but the same issue could also be said about cars without drivers. Yeah, some self-driving cruise cars got tangled up in San Francisco last night. At least two of the company's driverless cars were caught driving right through caution tape and downed wires. Crown Force Gail Ong is live in the city with the pictures and reaction. Gail. Yeah, Ken and Catherine, as we know, there's so much storm damage last night. And one car expert says those driverless cars should have detected the caution tape. Photos posted on social media show at least two of Cruz's driverless cars at the intersection of Leavenworth and Clay Streets in San Francisco Tuesday night. Both appear to be driving onto caution tape and downed wires. Cruz responded saying some of its cars were able to proceed on their own, while others needed a team member to come and retrieve them. One expert says this is a serious issue for Cruz. The, the sensors, the cameras and the LIDAR and the radar should be able to pick that up. Uh, the fact that they didn't indicates that Cruz has got a, an issue that they need to address fairly quickly. Sam Ebwell, Sam, an electric vehicle industry principal uh, analyst at GuideHouse, says through. it's time for regulators to step up and start establishing standards for these types of systems before they are allowed on public streets. We need a, a, an independent third party that can set uh, performance standards for things that these things should be able to see um, that you know may not necessarily be common, but you know, things like down power lines, you should be able to detect that and respond to that correctly. In this case, the cars got caught up in the aftermath of Tuesday's storm that brought heavy winds, knocking down trees in the neighborhood. The street was blocked off due to down muni wires. On the same night, this cruise car with its emergency lights on appeared to have no issues maneuvering around the city. It pulled up behind an SFPD patrol car on Baker Street and later drove off. But last September, cruise driverless vehicles were involved in three separate traffic incidents in San Francisco, blocking streets and a close call with a munibus. It's not uncommon for autonomous cars to be seen around the city, but it was for Daniel Zito visiting from out of state. It's a little scary, I would have to say, coming from New York. So I don't know. It's, it's cool, but I don't, I don't trust it yet. <laughs> And San Francisco has allowed autonomous cars to navigate its streets since 2020. Cruz did announce recently it wants to test its driverless cars across the state. Live at San Francisco, Gail Ong, Cron 4 News. There's like 10 of them. Now at nine, driverless cars caught halting traffic again, this time in San Francisco's North Beach neighborhood. Citizen video showing the congestion cruise vehicles caused late last night. Thanks for joining us here on Cromford News at nine. I'm Noel Bello. And I'm Dan Thorne. Just one day after the California Public Utilities Commission voted in favor of expanding robo taxi services in the city, a connectivity issue left several cruise vehicles stalled in the middle of the street Friday night. Crown Force Amanda Harry talked to witnesses and explains what Cruz says caused the issue. Amanda. Cruz says this glitch in their system was caused by all the people on their wireless devices at the Outside Lands Music Festival in Golden Gate Park. And some people are saying this shows the technology is not ready to expand its usage. There's like 10 of them. Traffic near Vallejo Street and Grant Avenue at a standstill Friday night. Cruise vehicles stopped for no apparent reason. With their hazards on, left people unable to go anywhere. Just lined up and then lined up all the way up Grant Street. Uh, as a, you know, just a procession of them. And we're like, oh my God, what's going on? Stephen Giddings is visiting San Francisco from New York City. He was near the intersection when the backup started. Jeffrey Bilbrey was inside of his apartment. He heard the commotion. I hear all these horns blowing and I look out and there's all these driverless cars lined up all the way down Vallejo here and there's one on Kearney that stalled. San Francisco Board of Supervisors President Aaron Peskin says this problem is becoming 
all too common. And now have over 50 documented instances of auto autonomous vehicles getting in the way of fire, uh, ambulance, and police activities. Um, so we express those concerns to the CPUC. But Peskin says their concerns didn't seem to influence the California Public Utilities Commission's decision. Thursday, they voted to expand autonomous vehicle operations to 24 hours a day while allowing companies to collect fares from riders, even without a human driver in the car. In a statement, Cruz says it's working on this latest issue, but Peskin still feels it's too soon to expand. It has to do with fundamental flaws in Cruz's technology uh, that are really very dangerous. Bottom line is when cell phones are not working, that's how they communicate with the cars to move them when they are immobilized or paralyzed, they can't move the cars. And Bill Bree says he's experienced issues beyond the autonomous vehicles stalling. I've almost been hit twice up on the hill up there when they were coming down the street, you know, and you can't stop them. I've tried. Supervisor Peskin says city officials are looking into next steps to temporarily delay the expansion service so autonomous vehicle companies can work out more of the kinks first. It ranges from asking for an injunction to possible litigation. In the newsroom, Amanda Harry, Cron4 News. All right, Amanda. The autonomous car company Waymo continues to grab people's attention on the road, especially if you haven't seen no one in the driver's seat, but there's a fleet of them keeping a group of neighbors, they say, awake. This is in the south of Market neighborhood. Our Cronfors Leslie Gooden spoke with a neighbor who has responded to the problem in a unique way. Honking from Waymo cars like this is a constant sound for neighbors living near 2nd and Harrison Street. The vehicles have been using this lot to park in between rides. I was woken up at like around 5 or so and I'm just it's like a lot of honking and then I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like what is going on? Sophia Tong says this has been happening on and off for three weeks now. It really became like a big deal when they would like come in and out when they were charging. Um, and bunch up in the lot and just, you know, start honking um, and then like the backing up sound. The issue started on July 28th. Since then, Waymo has fixed and updated the software twice. But over the weekend, the honking returned. So like this past Saturday, um, they were coming back from like their charging routine, I guess. And they bunched up in the lot again, but this time there were so many of them that it backed up into the road itself. We reached out to Waymo, who says the Sunday morning issue has been resolved, and it was a quiet Monday night, which Sophia confirmed. To make light of the situation, Sophia created a live stream documenting Waymo's activity and now has a global following. She says Waymo has been working with residents and a representative joined her live stream on Monday to better connect with the community. When you're designing complex systems, it's hard to predict like everything that could go wrong with it. Um, like a benevolent feature like honking, you know, when somebody else is backing up. But on the other hand, as a resident, I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like I can't sleep at night. Like. <laughs> Come on, guys. That's a good in Crawford News.